So hello and everyone, my name is Jim Campbell. Thank you for coming to this Buncee webinar. I'm super excited to be back again talking about something in a program that I just absolutely love. I'm joined by Ida, who is from Buncee. Yes, I am from Buncee. Sorry, I didn't realize that was my cue. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so, um, as I mentioned, I'm from Buncee. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I work with our community. Um, so definitely, if you have any questions, um, whether it's about Buncee or ambassador program, whatever the case is, feel free to reach out to me. Um, yeah, and excited to help you guys get set up and onboarded. So thank you, Ida, for being here today. So this is a, it is a webinar, but it's not the traditional type of webinar that if you worked with me last week or not, I'm going to be kind of working backwards. I mean, I am a, going to be talking about some of the things I do with Buncee and that I'll be kind of going the step-by-step -step process because what kind of started this whole thing, Shane, and this whole series of webinars, well, this series, I can't say two, but it's just two, is that a lot of people are reaching out to me on Twitter and saying, what is Buncee? I've heard of it, but what is Buncee? And I'll show you, I'm going to share my screen and I'll tell you a little bit more about B. And so this was meant to, last week I might refer to, but last week I was, was primarily just for phys ed. But today is going to be pretty much for everything, everyone, because Buncee really is a powerful tool that can be used for everyone. So I am recording it. So if someone says, oh, I really wanted to see it, I didn't get a chance to come today. That's why I have the recording. That's why I started very formally. And I'm going to be sharing my screen. So in the chat box, please feel free to leave questions. I'll try to answer them regularly and I will try to, and or Ida will be able to help out as well, right? So let's dive in. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, like I said, one of the reasons I started using Buncee was because I'm a New York City elementary phys ed teacher, and I wanted to be able to leave lessons for my students because I wasn't sure when they were accessing them, or if they were able to access them because of, you know, connectivity issues or because of, you know, whether using a Mac, whether using a Chromebook. So Buncee really gave me the power to do that because Buncee, one thing I love to say is, is that it's accessible for, and it works on pretty much any form, Google Classroom, Microsoft, it works on everything. So these are, I'm actually going to show you some of the things I've actually made and done before. This is actually I use for a webinar where it talks about me. I'm a physics teacher. I've done it for eight years. It's the end of my eighth year. I'm also certified in, in elementary and special education, which I've had two years of experience. I'm also on the SHAPE, that's the National Phys Ed Organization. I'm also in the Bowling Hall of Fame. So if someone is asking what is Buncee, it's the best way to describe it is kind of, it's, it's kind of like Google Slide, but more Buncee-rific, more powerful. And What's great about it is that it has a lot of functions. So this I actually used as a webinar a couple in early May to talk about literacy. And the way it works is that you have different slides, you have different ways to, you could autoplay, you could have full screen, there's a lot of accessibility. It's almost like Google Slides in the sense that, but it's, it's a lot more user-friendly, it's a lot more easy to access. Pretty much, if you show it, it's pretty, I like it that it's very easy to pick up. So it works so you have different things. You have the same functionality where there's text, where you could add pictures, where you could add videos. I love it because you could add the videos and it doesn't have to take you to another tab. It, it plays right there. So if you click hello, it. Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is... I'm not going to play the whole thing, but it played right then and there. So students, whether they're using it, it's just very easy. They could jump into it. They could access it. And like I said, I would do lessons and we use content and the students were able to follow that. So the students would be able and also be able to, as a phys ed teacher, they'd be able to access different games and activities many times. And even though I was doing phys ed, the, 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 the capabilities of Buncee are unlimited. These are just some of the things I do. What makes, let me show you how, what a Buncee looks like, what Buncee, the format, the interface, everything looks like. So you come here, this is your Buncee lab. This is where you have all your Bunceys. And it kind of keeps the tracks so if you want to duplicate it, you want to rename it, you want to keep it. Hey, Jim, one. sorry to interrupt. I think we're not seeing your screen. No, you're not seeing my screen, everyone, no? Um, oh, it's a little delayed. Oh, there, we can, oh. we're back on your dashboard. Oh, you are? Yeah, yeah, that's where I'm supposed to be on. Oh, thank okay, you. Okay, got it. Sure. Yeah, I can't really see it. I just see that it says you are sharing screen. So thank you for that. So can everyone see where it says literacy webinar? It says Buncee, it says all. Can everyone see that? Just look awesome. So this is my Buncee dashboard. 
And what's great about it is because if I want, I'm going to go kind of each piece by piece. Bunsy is great because they actually have a new thing where a new summer challenge, which I'm actually still working on the first one, I'm making acrostic poems, you get, it gives you notifications. And it's very, very, unlike my, sometimes maybe sharing my screen, it's actually very up to date where if, if somebody does something, you will be notified right away. You have a lot of limited, you have a lot of control. Bunsy is not just also for using to make sessions, but it's also good for, you know, I'll show us other things. Like I actually made Mother's Day cards or cards or posters. One powerful, so this is my dashboard. If, I, if you're using Microsoft Teams, you could actually, I'm not gonna go fully into it, but you could actually plan and actually do a Microsoft meeting, which in New York we have, we use Microsoft Teams. So that's one thing that we can do. The Ideas Lab is one of my favorite things. So for me, as a visit teacher, if I wanted to say, if I was told to go teach a lesson in math, I could come here and go to the Ideas Lab. I said, I just want to show you kind of like what it looks like, what it might be, and some of the, some of the things. So over here, these are the summer at home. Buncey's really great is because actually, pretty much when I said to Buncey, there's an interest, can I do a webinar? Either was like, I think it was like a day or two later, it was like, okay, let's talk about it. So Buncey is a very, Buncey is, a, is also based in New York and they are very into and trying to keep on the pulse of what teachers want, what teachers need. So there's a lot of different things. And as a physics teacher, a lot of this might be, oh, you know, there's something honestly for everyone. There's something that I can actually mold in. So just take a look, there's social studies, summer language, they have summer projects, they have summer things that you could use to send your students. I know in New York City, we're not done till next week, but even so, oh, physical education, ooh, just notice one. The share for phys ed at home. If I want to, you great thing about Buncey is that when you have your Buncey account, you just go, oh, I want to use this. I'm going to create this. I click to create this button. It copies it. I can edit it. And now it's mine. I can use it however I want to. It just takes a second to load. But the great thing about Buncey is that you really have a lot of power on how you want to share it. What's great about Buncey is so those are some, so that go, just go back to the dashboard for a second, but that's the ideas lab. It's right here. If you want to create, the yeah, Buncey is pretty much has like tools for everything. I have 37 tabs open because there's, I usually, whenever I, I've been making a couple lessons a week, I've been using Buncey. I probably have about 10 tabs open for Buncey because everything is just great. So you want to come over here. Like I said, you can come. This is what it would look like if you just wanted to create a new Buncey. You can start from scratch. You could use a template. Okay, like I said, I got to make a math lesson. I click over here, and it shows me all templates I could do. Also great about it is that I could preview it first beforehand. It's from any of the template. Create a secret math message. And these are actually very... What's also about great about Buncey is that, as you can see, it's it's very, it's what brought me to it is that it's very colorful. It's very student friendly. Students want, will really enjoy using it. They may not fully understand it at first, but they really do enjoy using it and looking at it, adding or subtracting. So I click on it. I can see what, I could use this template. I could add, a, yeah, and I could use it. What's great about Buncey is that, that the company is like Eater, Eater and Company are coming up with their own ones, but a lot of these, it's also very community kind of based. So it's not just coming from them. A lot of these on the ideas lab, for example, are shared from actual other teachers. I'm the first phys ed ambassador, but believe me, there's lots and lots and lots of ambassadors from other all over the place. I believe and there was a webinar this weekend from uh, over in Europe. So a bunch of users are all from all around the world. So these are some of the things printable worksheets, events and invitations, flyers. Yes, you could even use it for flyers. Like I said, I used it for a Mother's Day card. It is, there's like the, 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 the possibilities with Buncee are just like unlimited. So like I said, I know you're probably eager to jump in and get involved, but this is, so if I wanted to just do awards, back to the dashboard. What's great about Buncee is that, okay, cool. So now back to my thing, this is one, the first one I ever made is still there. I could always refer, these are the ones I've always made. If I wanted to share one with you, I could literally do it right there. Buncee also has some features where you can make something called the board. 
So say if I would say, okay, cool, we learned about quadrilaterals today, and you could kind of extend it. I know this is related to physical activity, but same idea of phones, where students can leave it. You could even leave to other Bunsies. And what's great about it is that you could, uh, it's also very accessible because I can see when a student or someone comments, you can, the students can see when someone else comments. So it's a lot of community kind of building that it's not just, here's an assignment, go do it. And then you don't know what's happening. The students don't know. They could also learn, they could also build them from each other. So this is one of the things, like what do you learn from the overload principle? And I could put the video, I could put the actual monthly lesson, they could respond to that, they could even comment on that. There's a lot of accessibility, there's a lot of control where if you want, how you want, how you want to share it. What I really love, so, so just kind of tying to it, Bunsi is very compatible with a lot of different features. It's compatible with Facebook, Google Classroom. I know in New York City we use Google Classroom. If you click on this button, it takes you right to it. And you can post it right there. So you don't have to worry about clicking and pasting. You could just do it right then and there. Even on Pinterest, Twitter, you can even email it, even QR codes if you're interested in doing that. You could also share it with students. Bunsi also allows you to, very similar to Google Classroom, where you can make your own classes. Same idea on Bunsi, where you can make a class. If you might have seen it, I actually made a sample assignment that I let people try, and a sample Bunsi. So this is what it looks like when you want to make a class. And I understand either there's a way to, I haven't done it yet, but there's a way to actually upload your Google Classroom rosters onto Bunsi? Yes, so if you're getting started with Bunsi, you have a few options to set up your student accounts. One is that uh, you can create them individually like he has in his screen over here. Um, and then you can do it in bulk, just manually create everyone's usernames. But if you're on the Bunsi for Schools account, you actually have the ability to synchronize your roster, whether it's from Microsoft or Google too. So let's say you're already managing your Google Classroom, Microsoft Office um, Classroom. You could just pull in all of those rosters right over. That said, your students will just press and sign in with Google or sign in with Microsoft, and then they'll be um, attached to you, if you will. Um, so you don't have to worry about going through the process of setting them up again and remembering another password. Thank you. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I haven't done that feature yet, but you could also do it the way where, if you notice over here where it says classroom code. And so if you want to just, it's, oh, it's the last day, it's less, oh, I want, to say, I want my student to make a Bunsy, I don't want to have to go through I could give them the class code, they could log in as a student, make their own account, and it takes them, as an example, they could log in and sign up and they could come right over here. Oh, and it's real, I really enjoy Bunsy. One thing I'm looking forward to more in the future, so when you want to make an assignment, this is what it looks like. You add an assignment. You can even go back to the one you made. What's great about it is that you can see the submissions. You can see not graded, graded. I know that build, oh, what's the progress? And anytime a student even literally, one submission was started for inner tennis. So I, for the assignment. So it will tell me if the student has even like opened the assignment or even looked at it. And what's great about Buncee is that this is the, so this is the progress. Like you see the progress. I can see all the records. There's a lot of, there's a lot of data and accessibility. So I can see, I can see the student. I can see overall, I can finish grading. And there's different, if you want to make, if you want to make it so that they don't have to, I'll show you. There's different ways. Do you want the student to make a Buncee as a response? Do you want to, when is it due? What students are you assigning it to? The level of feedback. Do you want to be able to make sure that you could give student feedback after they submitted or during their submission? Like as they're working on, if I say they made a mistake, I could kind of go back and look at them and help it and give them notes. And that's just great. I just love that function. And it's very real time and it just makes things easy. So you can interact with students and talk to students, or even if I were to give this out right now, you could do that and you're able to look and be in control of your teaching and learning. So that's the class function, that's the board function. Go back to my bun seat, all right? So let's take a pause so I can take a breath. Any questions so far? Either we have any questions? Everyone going good so good so far? Uh, no questions so far. Um, does anyone have, um, You feel free to unmute if you have anything. Okay. 
So I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about just kind of like, now that you've seen all the cool things that I've done, kind of just show you how the magic happens. So say I go back to this where I create a new Buncy. If I wanted to change my background, there's a lot of different backgrounds from the web. Like I said, one thing about that really inspired me and really kept me with using Buncy was just how much fun, honestly, it was for me to use. So if I wanted to upload, Buncy is always adding new ones. If I go to the newly added tab, this is a background. This is for a rock wall, for a home. Like I said, right now I'm just talking about well, well, my background is mostly in physical education, but like I said, there's, there's something for everyone with Buncy. So if I wanted to make my background, what's really great, and I use this if you're familiar with Google Slides or with PowerPoint, what's great about Buncy is that it's, I feel like it's a very, very, I want to say user-friendly, but it's, I want to say it's very fun. So you click here, everything over here on this right side is what you're going to be put adding onto the, your Buncy. So you have so many options. You could add text, shapes, drawing, 3D. So I wanted to add, okay, cool. We're talking about science recently used. There's, there's, there's categories. There's, there's levels of things. I'm talking about turtles or frogs. It will make a 3D one. It will come there. And it's not, you don't have to worry about where did I put it? Is it underneath? You cut, once it's in here, you go to the side on the right and you can find it there. If you want to add more things, What's great about it is that, is my button going to work? Is the video I just added in? Is the preview button? You can always check to see. If I make sure, oh, I forgot to put a title. It will remind me to do that. Also, there's so many fun there. One thing I'm very excited about that Buncee just did was that they actually added some animated, oh, so now the new one thing Buncee's have is that you're, if you're making on a creative streak, you get different Buncee, the Buncee men, right? They do different things and you can preview it. I'm also excited that Buncy added a lot of new exercise little gifts. If I can't quite find that gift that I want to do, I could just oh, I click him. I like this person. I'm going to put him in. And then I'm able to, it's super duper easy like that. It's it. This was made by Buncy. Because I remember I actually, actually Buncy did it on their own. I said I wanted to do a webinar and they actually added this on their own to also emphasize remote being, staying active and, and home. So there's lots of things. So also if I really, what's great about Buncy is that if I wanted to add the web image, these are educational friendly. So you don't have to scour and be worried about is it really going to be suited for students? Is it good for students? It's all there. You could add things from Khan Academy. My favorite one, is the import URL function, as that YouTube video I was telling you about before showing you. There's when a student, when it, when it gets embedded, when it's clicked in there, it, it, it plays and loads. You don't have to, sometimes I know a lot of times students have to go to another web page and they have to go back. No, with Buncee, it's all one-stop shopping. You can upload, and literally you can, up, you could upload drag and drop images, videos, once you've done before, it's, these videos I've made before. I've actually used Buncy for a couple different things, for a lot of professional different things that I've done for my shape council. Like I said, this guy's only These are some of the Buncees. Oh, that's a copy of Father's Day card. This is the Buncee I actually made for a webinar that I actually was a global reaching webinar. So I felt that comfortable and confident. This is the assignment I was talking about before. What's great about Buncee is that when you leave an assignment, Like I use the template, everything that I want to edit or do is on the side. If I wanted to add text, if I wanted to add myself talking, if I wanted to add audio, it's right there. What I also love about Buncee is that, especially for students of all language learners, of all walks, they have an immersive reader, which if you're not familiar with, is a great function because it will translate what's on the page pretty much any language will also read it so inner tennis what is inner tennis by jim h you're seeing different different parts are, are highlighted because the verbs are in red and i could change that the 
nouns are in purple. If I want to change it, okay, maybe I want to translate into French. It will also read it for them. Tennis intérieur. Qu'est-ce que le tennis intérieur? And all, they, all you have to do is just click back here. Oh, cool. Everything looks good for me right now. I could go back to editing it. And it's cool because there's a, if, I'm, if I post an assignment and I see four people have looked at it, probably need to kind of pay attention to it. But if I have a lot of, if they have a lot of, you could also leave it that people can comment on it so that they can leave a comment that other people can share and other people can see. That, there's just really a lot of things. So this just this is one that I actually just remade. So you could leave any kind of lesson. You could do a video. You can add this question over here on the bottom. You could add a free response question so that when you assign it, you can make it an assessment tool. Boom, it's not just a regular video. It's not just a slide. You can also look at it and students could respond to it. And actually you can make it an assessment piece. You could add a video. What's really great about it is, okay, I click on something. You notice I could duplicate it. Like I said, it's similar to PowerPoint. That's probably the best way to describe it, if you're not familiar with it or if you're explaining it to someone. But it's just much more powerful because there's just, it kind of takes that idea and kind of adds onto it. So you could choose the color. You want to add audio to it. You want to add music. You want to upload something, you want to upload your seat. Okay, this is how we do adding. This is how we teach any kind. Of, there's so many powerful tools you could do it. All you do have to do is click and record. You can upload ones that just audio. You can use audio that you've done before. It's all there and it keeps it right there. Other parts of the page show this way when the students do it and as they're answering the questions, like I showed you before, you can see it. And these are the questions. You want to leave a multiple choice? You can. You want to use a QR code? You can. Like I said, and the great thing about it, so sometimes, a lot of times I found, like, especially personally with PowerPoint and Google Slides, is that once you post something, it might upload, but sometimes when you actually send it out, it doesn't always work, which can be very frustrating. With Bunsey, I, I feel very confident that it does know that. So, and like I said, it's very easy to do, and like I enjoy doing this. And students, like, a lot of times, I would leave a lesson and then I would just kind of leave all the videos for my students and I'm able to do that. So they could refer to it and they could go back and they could look at it again. You might have heard about Bitmoji virtual classrooms. Bunsy works, Bunsy does that well too. That's where if you make a little Bitmoji and you can have it, this is my, I actually took a picture of my gym and I put a little Bitmoji and you can see it, they click on the link and it takes them to Another thing, oh, I can see it was someone liked it. It has 295 views, doing very good. Take your little gems. And uh, that's another, just another thing. So if you might've heard about it, you could take a picture of your classroom and Bitmojis, you could even use the Buncee has their own little pictures, little GIF, Buncee man animated little figures you can add in. Like I said, I know I'm talking a lot, but this is it's super exciting. I just, I can't tell, tell you how much I can just do it. So these are some of the things I'm actually doing that webinar again in August. This is the, the, the login screen, super duper easy. And actually this is one I just used today. I edited a video and I put it and I and it worked perfectly. One other thing I wanna mention is that if you're familiar with other apps, like how does Buncee work with other apps? It works perfectly. One I love if you're not familiar with, I know this is not, except this is a one I just literally made today, called Flipgrid where students could leave and respond, make videos and respond to other videos. There's actually a function where if you can leave, so if this is the question and when they wanna make their video, they can actually click on this and it takes them to the Buncee that I made. There's actually a tab for you to put in Buncee. Another app I found called Paradeck, which is great, but like I said, same thing. I could actually put Buncee into that and just tr make true, it's called app smashing, and just truly make it like accessible. So it's kind of unstoppable. That's why I just love Bunsy. Those are the sun things. It might seem it's like a little confusing at first, but like I said, it's once you start to get an idea and a feel for it, like I said, it's probably one of the best things I've ever, I've ever used. That's part of the question. Press on little gem. You have to press on, where was it? I forgot which. 
Are you, uh, Debbie, are you referring to the one where uh, my little classroom? I'll show you. Let's define it. No, let's go back to the, okay. It's been a busy day, so I've been doing, I've been using a lot of them. So these are, it also works with little GIFs that I could upload and it'll just keep the, it'll keep the same playing over and over again. So what's about a grade it is so that if you want to, like my little picture on my classroom, if I want to add, make a link to something else, like if I wanted to make a link to Flipgrid or if I want to make a link to something else, I click on the little chain and it takes it to YouTube. It takes it to different, that's a cool video I made where I actually used it by myself on a green screen. So like I said, I know it, it's really the, there's really so many possibilities and options that you can use once you've, like I said, there's even few things I feel like I'm still learning Buncee because I haven't really used it that long, but I feel like there's so, a lot of more things that I can start. I look forward to learning more about it over the summer. Any questions so far? Katie, do you see any questions? See no, no questions. Um, but um, so I guess some questions could be, you know, um, if you're interested and you're not sure, you know, where to get started, how, what would be the best direction? So one of my main recommendations is actually heading to Ideas Lab. And so that's the page that Jim had shared with you. Um, so still looking on his screen here. So when you're in your dashboard, you click that blue icon, which is, uh, or button rather, which heads to Ideas Lab. The cool thing about Ideas Lab is that it's like Jim mentioned, aside from the fact that, you know, we've shared some Buncees for it, um, examples, it's really community generated. And so it shares different examples from whether you're in math, science, English, literacy, language learning, et cetera. And so you have all of these different awesome final examples that you could build off for inspiration. And then at the same time, you could use as a template. Um, so all of these can be filtered by subject area as well as grade level. And I think this is a great start. I mean, there was one person that I spoke to um, just the other week, got started with Buncee and then already made 75 Buncees. And I thought if it was like a robot or <laughs> was it an <laughs> error, but then she actually said that she just went into Ideas Lab and found all of the activities really helpful. Um, as she went into remote learning. So she copied all of them right over. I was like, 75 Buncees in a day, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> but then I realized it was a from a template. Um, so yeah, so you could get started from here. Um, this one is a great place for inspiration. Um, but you know, the idea here is that because students can use it, a teacher can use it, administrators use it too. There's honestly so many different creative ways to do it. Um, and actually, Jim, if you don't mind, am I somehow able to share a screen here? I could show a quick example of some of my favorites from the community, actually. Yes. Does it allow? You, um, sure. Yeah, I could share a quick example. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so let me share my screen here. And then Jim, just let me know if you can see my screen once I um, head over. Um, do you see a Buncee? Giving directions, Chinese? Yes, yep, yep. So this is just an example of how it's been used in language learning. Um, so this guy essentially was teaching his students um, how to um, speak English and from, uh, they were Chinese uh, learners. So in any case, so what he's done is recorded his own video about it. Um, so again, you could do that right in the tool. Then you can type in different languages if you want. Um, so it matters for your keyboard. Other things that he's done is actually enunciate it with his own recorded audio. Um, so he's really trying to help the students as they work from home um, and such to be able to play this information back, learn how to enunciate the different words, and also be able to, first of all, see them because it's been a while, right? Um, so that was one example that I thought was really cool. Um, another neat thing is that, you know, the background and such is also pulled from Buncee, and then the images are also found from the web library. Um, cool thing about this is that, um, as Jim had touched upon in the beginning, that our images when you search in Buncee, aside from the fact they are definitely safe and filtered, um, is that they're actually Creative Commons licensed images. So if you're, you want your students to do a project or even yourself, um, you don't have to worry about them pulling an image that might be you know, not safe for them to use in the legal sense. Um, so it's all Creative Commons licensed, whether it's the animated graphics that you see, 
um, the ones that are pulled from the web and also the pan panoramic images that you're pulling from um, Bansi 2. So I thought this was a cool example, but um, just to kind of quickly show how a student has maybe done a project too. Um, this is really um, uh, more of a book review. Um, so what this student did, she's an upper elementary student, but in this instance, um, in a traditional book review, what she did was basically first upload her photo of the book. And then the background is from Bunsi, but then what's cool about it is that as you do go through it, um, she actually took it to sort of the next level. You know, in a general sense, you tend to do um, your sort of analysis about your characters by writing it out. So what this student did was actually play her own audio, shared the significance of these different characters, and she pulled the different characters that, you know, sort of represented who she learned about in the book. So it was a cool way for the teacher, first of all, to see that it's really their authentic work, but two, at the same time, know that the student's actually visualizing, you know, what she's reading in the class, and then at the same time, also hearing their personality behind it, so that it's not like, you know, back in the day where you would do spark notes or cliff notes, <laughs> um, but rather the student is actually, you know, sharing their reflections. So that was a pretty cool thing. And then as the kid goes forward, you, sh you, you could start to see how creative students are. And so in a traditional book review, again, you know, you tend to write out, you know, what are the different parts of the chapter that you learn and why is it important? Rather, the student actually visualized the entire scene that she loved. And so she pulled all of the different graphics um, from Bunsey, made an entire scene about it, and then added her own audio to reflect on what she's learned and why this was, you know, what she had chosen to um, share about. And then just going through again, this is another way for you to have your students record their own video um, so that they could also do more of a reflection. So I thought this was a great example of all of the different ways, you know, students are easily able to put, you know, just the media together. But one of my last favorite examples that I really love to show is actually made by um, an, uh, an assistant principal down in Florida. Um, so as remote learning happened, her challenge in the area was that obviously a lot of teachers were very confused. They were also very frustrated. And even for the students, now they're sort of disassociated with their teachers and you know, everyone that they know. And so this um, assistant principal, um, Victoria Morris, what she came up with is, let me do my own broadcast every week. And so she actually records her own broadcast on a Buncee, shares her different positivity into what she calls like a sparkle couch where she highlights different people in her community or her school, um, just to start um, the morning for everybody. Um, actually, I don't think you're gonna be able to hear because I have my earphones on, but you'll see the sort of liveliness behind her and probably guess how enthusiastic she is. <laughs> Yeah, so she goes on and she does all of these different broadcasts to, first of all, share updates for the school, you know, ev since everyone's out of touch, but at the same time, just highlight the, all of the different positive ways. So I thought this was such a great example of how it's not just about, you know, using Buncee to learn in the class, but also other ways that you could just use it in your personal life, um, or even just to connect with parents, um, you know, whoever it might be. Um, so yeah, these were some quick examples I thought I'd add to um, all the awesome examples you shared, Jim. Um, but yeah, you know, with Father's Day coming up, I think I, a recommended activity for me is maybe, you know, making that card for someone special to you or a father-like figure or so. But um, especially if you're still with your um, students and not out of um, school yet, um, that might be a fun, great first um, is have them maybe make their own personalized card. Um, so yeah, so that was my quick um, tidbit here to share about like different examples, but yeah, happy to answer any questions. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to share, you know, what are some of the things that maybe you were looking to learn, you know, what you're hoping to do maybe even for next year. Um, and I'd be happy to help answer in whatever way I can. So I'll stop sharing my screen here in the, a moment, but yeah. Any other questions? No? All right. Well, let me drop my um, contact info here. So as you get started um, and you have any questions at all, you know, in particular, maybe you're like, hey, how do I do my student accounts and how do I give them access? Totally feel free to um, just drop me a little note. Happy to help there. I put my email there too. I'm more than happy to, if you're on the Twitter, Yep. I'm, there too. I'm more than happy. I'm always sharing different ones that I make to promote Bunty, but also 
just kind of also put myself to just put it out there because it's a great tool as Ida was saying it's a great tool and especially for me I a lot of us don't know what is going to happen what, what the fall might look like I do know that whatever it is I'm once they probably will be in my most well, more than likely actually you know what but they will be in my uh, future because like I said it's even, no matter whether or not I'm fortunate to have some iPads some technology even for me in the gym but I definitely think there's practical uses is for Bunsy and I can't wait to use it and try it. No, that's exciting. And then one last thing I thought I'd note is we kind of covered a lot of like creating. Um, so whether that's, you know, from you as a teacher or what it looks like maybe as a student who's creating, but there's truthfully a lot more to Bunsy than that part itself. Mm -hmm. um, I should actually share a screen again. I'll do it super quick. I just want to be cognizant of everyone's time here, but um, aside from creating, one of the things to note, and Jim touched upon it um, pretty quickly here too, but you'll also be able to um, engage in discussion. So if you create your Bunsy, you'll allow people's comments on it. But if you remember that Bunsy board, which is where you could create collections of Bunsies, you'll also be able to have your students, you know, maybe share all of their work on it. Or even you as a teacher, maybe creating all of your um, Bunsy resources and then sharing that out with your fellow educators, but you'll also be able to engage in discussion on that. And so especially in a remote environment, it's very easy for you to get connected. Um, another main feature is that just to support everyone, especially throughout the summer, um, and, you know, making sure that students don't um, face challenges with, you know, maybe a summer slide or so. I'll just quickly share my screen back here. Um, do you see Bunsy? Um, my I see Bunsy, yes. Cool. Um, so let me just minimize this thing on Zoom here. Um, so yeah, so as you go on to um, to your Buncee account, one thing that you'll notice is actually the rewards. So you'll see this ribbon on any sort of tab that you head to, but this is honestly super cool. We just launched it. Um, but <laughs> essentially you can earn rewards for how many times you create, whether it's in a row or um, how many times maybe your student engages in discussion and such. But you'll be able to keep up a streak. And as you do, you'll be able to unlock different animations. Um, so a lot of folks have been sharing their story <laughs> that they've been unlocking. But every animation actually is one part of a full story. And so what's cool about it is that as you keep up your streak um, and unlock these rewards, each of them tell the next part to the next part to the next part of a story. So that's one really cool thing to do. But at the same time, you'll be able to earn badges. Um, we have special ones out there, but um, once you go in to open up, you know, sort of the maximize or expanded view of this little pop-up, um, what you'll notice is um, you'll see all of the recent animations that I've earned, how many more I have left to unlock. But at the same time, you know, my sort of engagement and activity that I've done. So you'll notice how many Bunsies I've created, boards, logins, comments, and reactions I've left. Um, so this is a great way, especially for your students, um, you know, it's for you to be able to know, you know, what their progress is or how engaged they might be in the tool itself. Um, and then if you click on view all of your badges, this is actually where you'll see all of the different badges that I've already earned. Let's say I have a rock star. Um, one of my favorites, I think I should have unlocked it, but I unlocked also the Buncee Artiste, which, uh, which I was, I've been channeling my inner Bob Ross. I like that. Um, but <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of different ways that you can earn rewards. Um, so again, it's whether you create a Buncee, how many times you do it, you know, if you do your assignments, submit them on time or do it in a row. Um, there's a lot of just different ways. And then as you go through, you'll be able to see um, all of the animations I've unlocked, but all of the different types of tasks um, that you might need to do in order to unlock it. So it's a great way for your students, especially if you want them to avoid, you know, potentially the summer slide, here's some fun activities for them to do along the way. So yeah, um, that was one of the last things I just wanted to um, quickly share about. But, you know, uh, if you guys have any questions at all, totally feel free to reach out to me. Again, it's edac at buncy.com. And I dropped it in the chat. But yeah, if you have questions, I'm here. Me too. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, thank you so much, everyone. I look forward to seeing your buncies. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Thanks again for um, joining in. Awesome. <laughs> Everyone loves Bunty. It's hard not to love. <laughs> I'm going to stop.